Help I Shrunk My Friends is the sequel to Help I Shrunk My Parents. It's the last one in the trilogy. The kids are older now and so they deal with um, teenage issues. And this time um, the film does not take place at the school, it takes place on a class trip. There is a new student called Melanie and um, she's causing all kinds of problems and then Hulda is back and um, you know she's, she's trying to regain her power. So the friends unite again to essentially fight evil and um, protect their school. Writing on the sequel was not only fun, but also very interesting. It almost feels like you're trying to compete against yourself in a match. Uh, we've worked with the material on the last film already, and, and now we try to improve upon what we did. And I think this score turned out even better than what we did um, on Help I Shrunk My Parents. Musically, you have some of the older themes, like the main theme, the school theme. You also have Hulda's theme that we keep reusing in, um, in this movie. We also have new themes. There's a new theme for Ella. And there is a theme from Melanie, the new girl. There's also a theme for the place they stay at on their class trip, which is kind of a haunted house type situation. My Friends is a really nice family film, but with a tendency towards creepy dark scenes. And this offered us to write scary dark music as well. I think these really pushed the soundtrack uh, towards a more grown up and, and serious sound in general. The production was definitely different this time around um, because we wrote the score and tried to produce it at the beginning of 2020. Uh, we started in winter, so this was before COVID hit. Um, and then gradually, as we were writing, the situation got worse across the globe. I was supposed to fly over to Belgium and actually conduct an orchestra and basically do the same thing that we did on Four Enchanted Sisters. But um, it looked more and more like that was not going to happen because one country after another was just shutting down and flights were canceled and so I could not travel over and they could not gather in large numbers in rooms. So it kind of caused a lot of problems um, for us. So we had to get quite creative in the way we recorded this. So what we did was we booked a studio that had a lot of ISO booths and all of those ISO booths ran into the same control room and um, we just put individual players into those ISO booths so they would not be in the same room together. So we got a flute player who could double on piccolo and alto flute and then we got a clarinet player who could also double on bass clarinet. Um, we got two violin players, a viola player and a cello player and they would essentially spend a lot of time overdubbing and just laying down take after take 
for each cue so that at the end of the day we could mix it in with the samples and kind of create a realistic sounding situation with the orchestra. Then of course editing was <laughs> a bit of a nightmare because we had so many takes and since they were not in the same room together in large numbers, you know, we had to tune a little bit here and there. They could hear each other over headphones, so they were all there in real time. Um, but you know, we still had to fine tune and do a lot of take editing and um, you know, time things a little bit because it's just very difficult for musicians if they're not in the same room and they're not interacting with one another to really attune to each other. And then of course mixing took a long time as well because we now had so many tracks um, and we needed to use so many different types of reverbs and delays and all kinds of stuff to essentially simulate an orchestra, simulate that they were sitting in a large room together instead of an ISO booth by themselves. But I'm really happy with the end result. I don't think you can actually really hear that it was not a full orchestra sitting in the room together playing, but that it was individual players laying down take after take. So it's definitely good to know for the future that this is possible and that it works, but um, I would not recommend it <laughs> because it creates a lot of extra work in terms of post-production. Whereas had we recorded with a full orchestra, then a lot of things would have been a lot easier. We also wrote and produced two songs for this movie. One is in a montage in the middle of the movie, and then one is at the end of the movie. I was already very excited when Anne reached out to me and asked me if I would write those two songs with her. Uh, but we then managed to add the artist Kia to the mix, and that was a perfect fit. I mean, Kia is not only a great singer, but also a fantastic lyricist. And the entire writing process from start to finish was very smooth with the three of us um, because we were all on the same page and we knew exactly where we wanted the song to go. I got a phone call from Anne a couple months ago and she asked me if I wanted to hop on this project which turned out to be the movie Help I Shrunk My Friends. The writing process is always incredibly fun in a collaborative setting. Um, you know, you hone in on your skills and you bounce off ideas from each other and um, it all comes together in this this musical piece. So um, Anne started off with the skeleton and the bones, um, the structure of the song, and then Lars and I put our flavors in the production and top lining and. Um, this all came together to these beautiful two tracks, Unstoppable and What Friends Are For. I have to say, even though we were in the middle of the COVID lockdown, um, it did not slow down our working process. I mean, we did have a lot of late night video chat sessions um, talking about lyrics and melodies, but we managed really well and the process was very smooth.
our song Unstoppable is more of a rebellious type of song. Um, it's when the new generation comes in and they go through all these adventures and obstacles and um, you know they make it through it, they're unstoppable, like they, they keep going uh, and keep going strong. I think Unstoppable is a really strong song with a powerful message and I especially like the distorted sounds and instruments combined with the electronic elements that we used um, which gives it this kind of modern but edgy sound. The second song, What Friends Are For, is more of a friendship um, surrounded theme. Um, you know, we thought about um, all the things that are important in friendships and the things that you value and you don't want to lose and knowing that you're always going to be there for each other. Um, those are certain topics that came to mind when we wrote this track. The movie is currently in theaters in Germany and select other countries in Europe. Uh, it'll be available for streaming later and on regular TV channels. And the soundtrack is available on all digital platforms. I was blind to see.